we'll start off, I'd like to introduce Hocken, uh, Hocken Olsen, he's Vice President of Maritime for Kamai Kaimeta, um, and um, he's a colleague that uh, we've been working with, a um, company that we've been working with, uh, Z3, for um, the last um, nearly four years, um, since they in uh, started introducing this fantastic bit of technology. So, Hocken, thank you. Thank you, Roger, and uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining us this morning. Uh, uh, I'm going to spend about 10-15 minutes talking about uh, flat panels and the way we view that the flat panels got, uh, is going to change the face of yachting. And then uh, Roger is going to spend about 10-15 minutes to talk about uh, how E3 is adding value to this whole chain. And uh, then hopefully have a session with questions and, and lots of answers. But first of all, what you see over there is the product. Uh, Roger and I have been talking about flat panels for four years, and now they're here. So that is the product that is uh, actually right now being put on uh, on two yachts. Uh, uh, it's 80 centimeter in diameter, weighs 16 kilograms, so you can go and pick it up, carry it on board, connect the cables, and you're up on the internet. It's it's almost that easy. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm going to start with some boring stuff. For you who don't know Kaimeda, we are a five-year-old company. We uh, uh, were founded in August 2012. Uh, and uh, it was founded after the technology ha had been proven in uh, a lab, in laboratory. Uh, and the first hand-built electronically scanning antenna using metamaterials, when that was shown, Bill Gates and a few other investors uh, pitched in funding to start Camera, and uh, we're very fortunate in that Bill Gates has continued to be not only an advocate for us but he's actually still the biggest shareholder in the company and he's also on the board of di directors so it's a, we're very for fortunate to have him on board. We are now about 160 people, most engineers and non-engineers like myself. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to talk about how we view flat panels will change the face of your yachting. And the first one is the visual aspects. Um, this is the uh, 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 recent uh, Lursen yacht that was launched. You probably noticed it with the, with the bulb, vor warts on top, as I called it. <laughs> uh, just the ability to let the designers innovate beautiful designs and not obfuscate the design by having domes. We think this is going to be the key, one of the key aspects of changing the face of yachting. Uh, and another example is this yacht, the Maltese Falcon, that you probably know. The only reason they have the mast in front is for the satellite domes and radar. So uh, to be able to, to clean that up and uh, really take advantage of the beautiful design, um, it's, 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 it's an important aspect. The second uh, way that we are going to be changing the, the way the face of yachting is the connectivity itself because that antenna is not do doing anything for owners, crews and guests unless you have a really good connection. So what we are launching now is not only the antenna but a global, uh, global uh, satellite service. You can kind of see the coverage maps here. But it's not just a traditional satellite service, it's kind of what you have on your, on your phones. You know, when you use your iPhone or other phones, you, you just connect to internet wherever you are. You pay gig for the gigabytes per month that, that you use, or unlimited, and you're good with that. You don't have an MIR, you don't have a CIR, and why would you care as a user, right? So this network is built exactly as the, uh, f f the phone <laughs> system in that you're, it's a subscription plans where you pay gigabytes per month and then you get whatever throughput is available on the network. And the reason we can do this is that we have a strategic partnership with Intelsat and Intelsat is the world's largest satellite operator with, uh, today o operating over 85 satellites uh, over the world. <clears throat> and as of two months ago, they uh, one web with over 900 low Earth orbit satellites that you may have heard of is now becoming part of the Intelsat network. And once that becomes uh, part of the network in about 2020, 
uh, it is built to work with our antennas. So it's a way of future-proofing a yacht. You can certainly use the geostationary satellites that are up today, but when this low Earth orbit satellite comes up, you can start uh, communicating with those as well with our flat panels. An interesting thing is that uh, traditional domes are not fast enough it can't scan fast enough to be able to work with today's uh, uh, w with the low Earth orbit satellites. So you actually need uh, a, a electronically scanned antenna to be able to work with those. The other thing is that the service that comes with the antenna is we can think about it as a base service. And as I said, uh, uh, but this service doesn't have an MIR or CIR con committed uh, information rate. But if you want, if an owner is adamant is that I'm going to be on board and I want 20 megabits per second, that's where E3 comes in and they can add that on, whether it's from Marlink or Speedcast or MTN or uh, uh, NSSL, sorry, yeah. <laughs> Who's that? <laughs> you can certainly do that. So you can think about it as a fantastic easy to install with a base service that we're, is going to be working great for crew and um, some guests. But if the owner is adamant and having a premium service, we can uh, certainly add that on top. The third thing is what we call unprecedented scalability. And in today's world of satellite communications, you either have a small dome or a huge dome. Um, there's yachts that have like a 2.4 or 3.8 meter and they are literally huge. You can get the same effect as a big antenna with panels and the way you do it is that you just put multiple panels just like solar panels because with one solar panel you can get some electricity but with many solar panels you can get a lot of electricity. So Kameta has built a combiner where you can, can combine up to 64 panels. So if you want to go really crazy and have a, even more than a more efficient antenna than any dome can provide today, you, you can add up to 64 antennas in one system. So it's really a way to scale and customize the solution based on the requirement from, from uh, the owner on the yacht. <coughs> So, this is just an animation of the uh, antenna, and, uh, the, but with the real thing, I just want to point out a few things. Uh, this is a replica of the antenna, so it's not a functioning antenna, but it looks exactly the same, it's the same weight, so if you want to come up afterwards and uh, lift it, please feel free. The connector in the, midi in the middle is a WR75 connector, and that is where the diplexer connects to the buck and LMB. So the buck is the block up converter for, uh, that do the transmission of the signal, and the LMB is what do they um, uh, receive. And you simply connect those two uh, coax cables down to the modem uh, and the buck and LMB. And then, then uh, and that's all you need. You don't need a traditional below deck unit because the smarts of the antenna is all built in to the antenna. So it knows which angle it's mounted at, it knows which satellites it's, it's supposed to connect to, and it figures out how to do a beam pattern to point exactly to that antenna. And actually, I heard a statistic uh, last week that's kind of funny because this antenna is capable of finding a satellite within half of a degree and I heard this that that's equivalent of throwing a ball going around the earth and hitting you within about uh, 100 feet that's how precise it is <clears throat> and then it's fast enough so that as a vessel moves you can actually have the vessel moving about twice the speed uh, compared to what today's uh, mechanically steered antennas is capable of. So you can go on much smaller vessels with, with this as well. Uh, this antenna, I don't know if, if you can see here, but it's, it's very similar to a TV screen actually. Uh, the, the smart of the antenna is in this glass-on-glass -glass TFT which is being manufactured by, by TV manufacturers. So this TV screen has the same active element as our antenna. The main difference is uh, the this feed assembly in the back where the, uh, the, the uh, 20 and 30 megahertz uh, uh, 
uh, sorry, the 10 and f 14 megahertz signal is being fed through. And then this TFT has tens of thousands of pixels, just like a TV screen, that opens and closes in a pattern to then uh, uh, let the uh, radio frequency energy through and creates a beam in a certain direction. So it's by changing the pattern on what pixels are open and closed that uh, creates the beam in a certain direction. And it's literally just those layers in this, an this antenna. It's been built and proven for IP66 standard, so ingress pro progression, so essentially you can hose it down with water. It's been tested with uh, temperatures down to minus 80 degrees up to plus 95. Uh, humidity, salt spray, all of that, we've done all those tests. So you don't need a dome over it, obviously, <laughs> and you can just put it out there. So when it comes to yachts, how, you would in, how, how would you build a system with these flat panels? And the first type is a one panel solution. So you can think about the Caribbean as, as an example. The Caribbean is fairly, fairly far south. So the elevation to the, the satellites is pretty high. So you can have just one panel and then as the boat uh, cruises around, uh, the, the antenna stays connected. In the Mediterranean, however, most satellite is, is at a lower angle, and if it's at a low angle, you, uh, you're not going to get a whole lot of signal from an antenna that's sitting flat. And that's where you go to multiple connections, uh, uh, multiple antennas, where you mount them at an angle, and then uh, uh, at least four panels 90 degrees apart. And then as the vessel cruises around, it switches from antenna to antenna. And at the same time, if you have multiple antennas, that's where you're going to get the benefit of uh, w through our combiner to use the signal strength from any antennas that you have on board. But those are the two typical uh, installations, the one panel for regional cruising, but if you have a global vessel or if you're in an area with lower angles to, to the satellite, that's when you would have multiple panels. And this is just an animation of how how a global solution with multiple panels could look like. So it could be a refit for a uh, vessel where might, that might have dome out in the stack already and then you can have a, build a little ski box or pod and uh, put these panels inside. But what Roger and I have been doing over the last couple of years is... Did I do it again? Yeah, there we go. Uh, he's been working directly with shipyards to work with them as they design yachts to figure out where to put panels and incorporate it as part of the design so, so you don't uh, see them at all. So this is a typical way to doing it, finding areas on the superstructure that where there is no blocking and then put the panels on there. And, and before I uh, li uh, give the word to Roger, I'm going to share with you a very exciting project we worked on in uh, July and August last year and uh, it started with it was a designer in Italy that uh, sent an email to Cameda and he said I'm working on a yacht design I'm desperately finding a way to uh, get rid of the domes can you please contact me <laughs> so I called Roger hey let's get on the call with this guy and see what he has going on and it's this 190 meter yacht uh, called Amash 190. <laughs> uh, this was actually showcased at the Monaco Yacht Show last year, but he reached out to us in July last year and said, hey, my, uh, he was working with a, a, um, a naval architect in Germany, and they said, he told him, you need to allocate half of the area up here for domes. And the designer said, no way. <laughs> well, why use the most precious real estate up here for, for domes? I just don't, won't do it. So we, were, we got on the phone and we were brainstorming back and forth on where could we put panels. And uh, there's a very interesting feature in front here in the hel helipad, which kind of looked like the Starship Enterprise. So what we ended up doing 
was we put 36 panels around this ring. Uh, which, and the interesting thing is that at any point you will have at least 16 of these panels connected to a satellite. And that is equivalent at, to at least 2.4 meter antenna. So the efficiency of a solution like this enabling much higher throughput and lower monthly costs uh, uh, is something that you ca can't really do with, with, uh, with traditional antennas. So this, I just show this because it opens up new ways of thinking on how you can design boats and how you can get around the pollution of traditional domes, so to speak. Uh, so recent successes, um, you may have been at the Monaco show where we showed two of these and a combiner where we had 65 megabits per second down and 6 megabits per second up uh, at the show. It was actually the first time I've been at the show where I had really good connectivity. I could FaceTime with my wife and I could uh, watch my Netflix and all of that. It was fantastic. <laughs> I didn't have much time to do it, but I could. <laughs> Shockwave when uh, uh, through the industry, and not just the yachting industry, but also the, the uh, satellite industry, when we were able to show that it actually worked. Because for years there has been these engineers that has written white papers on why Kameda technology will never be able to connect to a satellite and we showed them wrong so that was fun <laughs> and we are right now doing a second round with a drive across America we have one of these antennas on a uh, uh, Toyota RAV4 and driving across America so if you come back to the booth later today we may be uh, doing a Skype video with them from the from the Houston area in the US if you want to see see it live so with that said um, I just want to, uh, I'm gonna give the word to Roger but I just want to explain how Kameda and E3 how we relate to each other uh, and the way you can think about Kameda is that we are the company behind this uh, unique uh, flat panel technology where there's no no equivalence in the industry we are pursuing multiple markets uh, and I have personal I'm personally on point for maritime and it's been such a pleasure working with e3 over the last three and a half years because three and a half year, year ago I knew not, nothing about yachting Kameda knew n nothing about yachting and to get Roger and his team who has been doing this for decades their expertise has been absolutely instrumental for us so we have now signed an agreement to a partner on the yachting industry where e3 is is going to be our path into the yachting industry and uh, that's what Roger is going to uh, talk more about and I want to again thank Roger and his whole team for the patience and persistence over the last couple of years and Roger for those of you that don't know me which is a few people in here is Roger I'm Roger Hornick um, managing director of E3 um, delighted to have Hocken and Carl um, from Kameda here um, well, last night we signed an uh, absolutely fantastic agreement for the, to being the global distributors for um, the Kameda panel for yachts over 24 meters globally, um, which we've been working on for three and a half years. The reason why I look so knackered is because we've been teetering on the edge of this for, for such a long time, but we did a fantastic signing last night between Seattle and here. So we've got a lot of work to do on Monday. Um, um, but um, let me tell you how we're going to do it. Um, three, three and a half years we sp we've spent collaborating with, with Kymeta. Since we first heard about the flat panel, we gave them a call and said, what about yachting? And they said, we know nothing about yachting. I said, well, we do. Let's help you. So that's how it all started. Last year, we were appointed as the first Kymeta certified partner, uh, which means that after all of the input that we've put in to help them build the panel such that it suits yachts, um, it's got all the appropriate attributes to suit yachting. Um, they then decided that they've got the product now, they need to train us all about it, so we're the only current certified partner, uh, Kymeta certified partner, but we plan to train other VARs around the world to become certified partners. As I say, yesterday we were appointed as global distributor for yachting. Um, doesn't mean that it's only going to be, we're, we're distributing it, we're not going to sell to end users, this is to distribute to, through VARs and service providers, etc. Um, um, and our, our target is to um, uh, create solutions to deliver to all yachts over 24 meters, whether it be sailboats, motor yachts, regional, uh, global. Um, how are we going to do that? We're going to 
Every, the, the, the difference between putting a panel solution onto a boat and a, um, and a dome is with a dome you find a bit of area of the boat that's got free to air viewing as much as possible and you bolt on the dome with full bolts. But it, it looks terrible. The end, end result is that it looks terrible at the end of the day. The boat peppered with them, domes all over the place. You know, we've been putting domes on boats and ruining the design of boats for years. And um, this is a kind of like purging my design guilt now of all the boats that we've ruined the look, the look of. Um, um, we are going to be appointing and training VARs globally. We're going to be training them, uh, training school and setting them up as, um, as Kymeta certified partners because the, 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 it ha that everybody has to be trained to know where to put the panels um, because each panel has a 120 degree cone scan angle and they've got to be positioned in the right place to provide the complete 360 degree azimuth to an elevation coverage. Um, we are going to be, we've already started, we're going to be certifying certain shipyards. We're visiting shipyards, we're going to be certifying certain shipyards uh, to become certified installation um, um, uh, yards uh, to become um, um, and then th we will create a list when people want to go flat um, with their boat we will give them a list of, uh, of approved yards that they could go to and talk to um, we're going to invite satellite service providers the one thing that I'm really pleased about the deal that we negotiated with um, Kymeta is up until today yesterday the deal was it was going to be exclusive to Panasonic Airtime, but that's not the case anymore. The important thing, we said, the future for this panel, uh, you could end up being a Betacam uh, VHS situation where you've got the best technology, but you sell less because you've tied it down to one service provider. It needs to be an open standard. So it is now going to be an open standard, and we're going to invite all service providers um, uh, to be able to enable their airtime on the panel. Uh, we'll also approach other areas. We're talking to, we've got a couple of projects with ferries and merchant shipping and stuff like that. So what we do with, as we all know, with the yacht market, early innovation, lots of new technology goes on in the yacht market first and it can be, it can be leveraged out to other parallel marketplaces. So that's what we plan to do as well. Um, what solutions are we going to be providing? Um, we're we obviously, as Hawken said, a single panel solution, a dual panel regional solution with an arbitrator, so effectively like having two domes uh, with mass shadow in the middle, but for regional use so that it switches over from one panel to the other with the mass shadow in the middle. A four panel global solution, an eight panel solution, and a 16 panel solution. The eight and the 16 panel solutions won't be um, installable until um, 19. But um, 17, 18, we can do all the others, and um, and um, the um, all every panel. The, one of the USPs about this product is that when you buy a panel, whether it's a single panel, four panel, or, a, or or an eight panel solution, it comes with airtime. So you can you can you can have it work. It comes with the Kalo airtime as standard. So um, you buy a panel, and it's got 12 months of 40 gig a month. Um, uh, uh, gigabytes a month um, airtime on it, which, as Hawkins says, is um, is uh, is from 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 their stable. But we can switch in and out um, third-party uh, service provider MIR and CIR systems as well. Uh, what is the Kalo air, the, the the Kalo airtime? Is um, it's a global service based on as Hawkins actually he's already said this based on the Intelsat network. The footprint that you saw earlier is going to be expanded. Um, but that's um, uh, where, where we're starting with at the moment. It includes all their wide beam sats, their HTS sats, and uh, uh, and, and future the OneWeb uh, low Earth orbit sats from 2020. It's a 20, 12 month contract that can be used over over 24 months. That comes with the panel to start with. So, for instance, if we've got a regional yacht that only needs it for 12 months of the year, they've got six months and six months over 24 months to use. We see it very much as the base. Base. It's a change in the way that we see it that's going forward, and it's part and parcel of how we have specified what we believe is necessary. It's a base contract that it will be there in the background all of the time. But when guests, owners are on board, we can upgrade it with a CIR and IR service from a, from another service provider um, for when as when the owners and guests are on board. So, and then we have the ability 
to, um, to um, switch it off and on with our hybrid control app, uh, which can be done on the boat. You can switch one in and one out and upgrade and downgrade and control it. Um, it's, it's really like a cell phone service, as Kalo. It's um, it basically, it, it's a monthly allowance. So if, for instance, you go for 40 gig, it's 40 gig a month. You can upgrade it during a busy time to 160 gig or whatever. It's incredibly cheap, $58. If you go for a one gig service for a month, it's $58. If you go for a, 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 a just on its own, but if you, um, if you, um, you know, it doesn't go up much above a thousand dollars a month for airtime. Um, it is a fantastic introduction. It's a radical disruptive move in the industry. Um, but it only goes, it's like your cell phone, exactly the same as your cell phone. So if you're in Monaco and there's thousands of people using it, it's going to really slow down. Um, but however, if you're a, 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 um, a um, deep sea tuna trawler in the middle of the Pacific and you're on the equator fishing for tuna, and you're a Spanish fisherman and he's paying 398 bucks a month um, for Kalo, um, then he can, he can stream all the Spanish soccer matches. Um, and he's got nobody to compete with, so he's probably got it at you know, full HTS speed, all to himself. it would be fantastic service. So, you know, it's going to be horses for courses as per everything. Um, and as I mentioned, we're introducing an onboard touchscreen hybrid control app for our hybrid solutions. Um, the, where the, um, the boat can control and upgrade and downgrade and, and um, everything that they've got on board. Um, all of their data connectivity, their management, their monitoring systems, their TV systems, etc. And part of this deal with them um, um, having signed this agreement, as part of that is that we're going through a big expansion at E3. We're looking to recruiting 17 new staff this year and um, 28 over the next, um, predicted 28 over the next few years. We're setting up a 24-7 um, SOC, not a NOC. It's a, it's a systems operations center because our SOC is not just supporting VSAT. It's supporting 3G, 4G, it's supporting the whole IT network. And, and um, if, you ever, if you want to come and visit our offices, we have this all running and we have a screen where one particular screen in there that's got a, a E3 design support pie chart for each boat and it's got every device on the boat that has got an IP connection that we're monitoring from portals and we can tell whether the access point has gone down in the VIP stateroom, um, a VIP stateroom or a cabin before the boat knows about it. And we've got this, 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 this sector pie chart with everything on it. And if anything goes red, ding, it pops up and it tells us they've got an issue with anything on board. So we go through the whole network, the whole of the data communication system, and then down to the um, connectivity, the management, the monitoring, the VSAT connectivity, and the 3G, 4G connectivity. It's pretty unique what we're doing there, covering the whole thing. That's why it's called a SOC, not a NOC. Um, Third-party satellite providers. Um, we're working with other service providers uh, together with Kymeta to provision the panels for their airtime. Um, we're inviting others who um, we haven't started working with to, to, to approach us at the same time. Um, and obviously, as I already mentioned, they'll enable a panel, the panel to automatically be switched over to, to, to do different systems. We expect to have two modems in parallel, so we can switch between one and the other. Uh, both X7 I direct um, and their services um, um, will be offered to um, um, the VARs in conjunction with the Kalo service as, as well and through the VAR network. TV services, the, 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 the interesting thing is that the panels, the panels not only transmit and receive, that panel transmits and receives but it also can receive multicast TV as well. So the panels, it's not just replacing VSAT, it's replacing TV dishes as well. The, the, um, um, however, the way the TV is transmitted is regional with regard to the way TVRO works at the moment. So, for instance, if you want Sky, you can only get it over here. But with this system, the intention is, is with our multicast services, that we're looking to be able to having the same TV worldwide wherever the boat goes, if it's under the, the appropriate footprint of the service provider that um, has, is providing the panels. Um, it will also obviously stream, um, stream 
you know, your, your, your IP, IPTV streaming will, um, it, it will enable that. And the Kalo service will be fantastic for that. So if you've got 40, I mean, typically, an, a, a standard definition TV channel will require a gigabyte of data per hour to watch. So, so if you if you were um, you know, um, paying fifty eight dollars for a one gigabyte, that's one hour's TV watching effectively. So that's the the measure. But obviously, the the more gigabyte package that you get, it's a lot less per gigabyte. Um, we're going to be um, inviting the third party uh, service, satellite service providers also to bring their uh, TV solutions into the for the system as well. Carmeta fits into our hybrid solution. Now, our hybrid solution is, one, is our trademark service where we actually synchronize land and satellite connectivity together on a yacht. And um, we provide both, E3 provides both satellite from a basket full of the best service providers um, and uh, 3G, 4G connectivity and in Marsat connectivity. We synchronize the whole lot together, manage and monitor it um, so that the boat can move from inshore to offshore and combine the two uh, satellite and, um, and, um, and, and satellite and land-based connectivity together, take the advantage of faster, uh, cheaper inshore services such as the 3G and 4G services and obviously using um, and, 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 and the Chimera satellite solution comes in as part of that satellite solution. Um, the whole thing comes as uh, one billing structure for per, it's a single cost per month for satellite, land, data monitoring, data management, the, um, the SOC that I just service that I just explained to you. And that's again something unique that E3 does is that we provide, it's a one monthly figure for the whole year. So the boat can budget for the whole year and includes bandwidth, up <coughs> includes bandwidth upgrades as well that are estimated to be required during the year. And the TV services, everything in total. Now, Changing the face of yachting. This is a, this. Um, there's, there's obviously new builds and there's refits. And this is, as you will, a number of you will know, this is Venus, Steve Jobs' boat. And this is what Venus <coughs> was designed to look like here. If you can see this here, and fence up around on the top which it literally is a garden fence, but you can still see the domes poking off the top of it. It's completely ruined the design. Now with flat panels, we can take those off and you end up back with um, what the boat was designed to look like originally. Maltese Falcon is another example. Um, Tom Perkins hated having to do this when he built the boat originally, but they had no option. He had no option to do it. Um, well, that's actually what it is at the moment, this, 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 this mast here. But this is what it could look like. They've still got radars. This is a loner with, you know, remove that off and you've actually got something a little bit more reasonable. We well, have had, I have to say, I've had a couple of owners on booths saying, but I like my domes. I like my domes. Um, oh, here's a sort of macho thing. I've got my, my domes. And we said, well, there's no issue with that. Put the flat panel inside the dome. <laughs> And then, as, as we know, fantastic new ideas. We, we've had such a lot of fun. Hogg and I have traveled the world over the last three years, going to different places. And um, we have had some fantastic response from, from yacht designers and a lot of the rock star designers. Tim Haywood is my new best mate. It's fantastic. And, you know, and, I, and I, get to, I get calls from the CEO of Perini on my mobile phone. And, you know, this whole thing has revolutionized E3, I can tell you. And it's renewed my energy for going on to the future. It is fantastic. But some, so some of the designers that, we've, that we've, we've come across come out with some fantastic ideas because they can now. They can come up with new ideas. So what's happening tomorrow? In early May, we're going to be installing prototype A on sailing yacht X um, in the Caribbean and that's going to be heading to Bermuda for the America's Cup and then it's coming across the Atlantic and then it's going to be sailing around the Mediterranean all summer. After that we're installing in, in so that's actually 15th of May that we we do that boat, the boat will leave Antigua and then after that late May beginning of June we're installing it on a big motor yacht in the Med 
and that's going to cruise around on its itinerary. First one's a charter yacht, the other one, the next one's a private yacht, and that's going to cruise around the Mediterranean all summer on its um, private um, use. And um, we are going to be keeping it really quiet and secret until we prove that it's all working, and then we're going to tell everybody. And we're going to invite. Uh, we're going to invite press on board, we're going to invite independent consultants to come on board and, and, and check the system out. Because last year, as Hawken was saying at the Monaco show, we had this fantastic 65 six, 6 meg system working. And everybody said, oh well, it's all very well, but it's not on a boat, is it? And um, so we're determined to sort this one out. Um, and uh, so that's what's happening in the next few weeks. These boats are going to sea. Um, and, uh, and then we're bringing them to the Monaco show both of them and we plan to we have a vision at the Monaco show of uh, our planning of, uh, at the moment is we've got our usual booth in the show we're also planning to have um, another a restaurant presence outside the Darce Sud we hope to have a tender that will take to, to, um, to yacht A and then to, and then to yacht B uh, which will be outside the show so they're moving the swinging anchor so it's not as if it's tied on the dock you know we need to have them actually out at sea and, um, and have, have them working. So that's the plan um, at the Monaco show. So that should be, that should, that's, that's, hopefully that's all going to work. Um, and what's happening tomorrow? We're going to be here for the next five days. We're inviting people now. We, we're, we're open for business now. We're inviting people to come to us if they want to become a VAR, a service providers who may be interested in putting their airtime on the panel, shipyards, new and refit to come and talk to us. And um, also, if anybody wants a job, we're, we're recruiting heavily as well. <laughs> so, thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you. Well